Alright, hello everyone! Outside of the maps, we got one more part to cover, which is the weapons, and of course, the best is saved for last. We have all the top tier weapons, as per usual, zones only, competitive environment, tiers not ordered. You already know this by now, let's get started. First up, it's the splash -o -matic. This is a weapon I could see going higher, because I think crab has become more and more valuable. Despite how valuable crab is, I don't see it as an absolute necessity, nor do I see any of the three crab weapons listed here as inherent the best one, which is why they're all going to be in this tier, but this is probably the most common crab option we're seeing right now. It's Burst Bomb, it's Crab Tank, it's Splash, it's Synergy that we have all seen for a while. It's one of the best kits in the game, and despite Crab's nerfs, Crab is very essential for providing consistency, paint, entry, a counter to backlines. It is the core of a lot of comps. The weapon does struggle a bit more in matchups than it used to. Burst Bomb is not the poking tool it used to be, and Crab is still a special that has its own fair ways of countering it, but right now this is a weapon that's in a very good spot, and I could even see it being higher if crab becomes more of a necessity and this becomes the main crab weapon. Likewise, Splattershot is your Zooka weapon. It's pretty much the same thing as Splash in that regard. If this is your base Zooka gun, you see. It's not the best one, but if you're picking to have a Zooka, this is the gun you are going to pick. It's just, again, a lot like Splash. A bit better at fighting, a bit less support tools. You have a lethal bomb instead, but outside of that, a lot of it here is exactly the same. Jumping to a more different weapon, we have the Vanilla Sloshing Machine. In all modes combined, I would probably rank this a tier lower, but I think in zones only, this kit thrives more than it normally does. This is one of the easiest options to pick for long range area of effect. Double fizzy bomb is still a thing you can get quite easily on this weapon. Last ditch plus one sub of sub saver, providing insane paint output, allowing potential for double fizzy comps if you run it alongside tri slosher. You have area of effect, you have a decent fighter, you have something that benefits from cooler for itself. It does have some problems though, of course. Machine is very slow, the main weapon still doesn't paint a lot, it still is a decent decent amount of downtime, and it does struggle with being rushed down. Lately, I think we've seen more comps that help it, and Machine player is getting a little bit better to the point where I still think Machine barely makes it to this tier. I still think we can see it winning. I think it's the best kit, and really, even at 220p, it's just such a solid package. Up next is Vanilla Roller. Most of this is being pushed by the JPV Roller. I don't know his name. It's like 3300, and this guy has gone like top two in multiple tournaments now. This is one of two cases of a one trick is getting a a lot of results. And in this case, I agree with it. Obviously, one player winning does not mean a weapon is up here that much on its own, but I think this is a really solid deal. First off, I think Roller's vertical flick is absolutely insane. The amount of distance and ledge peaking this thing reaches is really good, and the horizontal flick is extremely reliable with much better range than Carbon's. It doesn't even really need the burst bomb. Curling bomb gives it really good mobility. You can use quick super jump on builds, which is what we're seeing a lot with Roller to kind of get out of bad situations. And it means compared to Carbon, Roller doesn't really die as much, and it's basically a constant threat of where is this guy that will instantly kill me if I ever mess up, and people are just paranoid about it the whole game. Bubble, while a bit of a weaker special like I've talked about before, works a lot better with this weapon than it does with any of the others. Entering a bubble on pretty much any other weapon, while difficult at times, is possible. The bubble on roller, on the other hand, is impossible to enter. The hitbox on the horizontal flick is just insanely good at covering it, and so it means roller, whenever it sets up a bubble, basically is a better one than other weapons, and on top of that, current alongside the sharking playstyle it has means that Roller is going to be able to set up a lot better bubbles than most other weapons anyway. I think this is a playstyle that has clearly been proven to work if a player is good enough, and that's why I think it's this high. I think it is a very solid niche no other weapon can replicate. Next up is our second crab weapon we're going to be talking about, which is the Vanilla Dooleys. I think this main utility over Splash is having a suction bomb instead, having another lethal bomb covers it a lot, but also especially since their speed buff a while back, I think Dooley's dodge rolls are incredible strong, especially when you have cooler's ink resistance, so you're basically not taking damage whenever you roll through enemy ink. It gives you very strong mobility that makes it a better fighter than most of the other shooters. On top of that, while it's a little bit worse in like painting and ink efficiency and stuff than shooters, it is still well-rounded enough to be able to play in a comp slot where it's very easy to work things around it. Which one is better between it and Splash is a debate that will probably last until the end of time, but I think right now Dooley is in a good spot where it has a lot of comps it works into. It does struggle against a few mid-range options and sometimes wall, but I think it's something where the kit is more than capable of giving it options to play around that. So next up is Range Blaster. I said there were two weapons that are here because one tricks have pushed them, and this is the other one. This weapon has a bit more results from other notable players on the weapon in West and JP. However, again, it is mainly one guy in Japan who gets a ton of results with the weapon. In this case, I think it is worth arguing for. I think this weapon has the best long range area of effect when compared to machine. I think it is a better main weapon in terms of the one shot capability, the bigger 
hitbox, and recently it even has a higher likelihood of painting over someone's feet, which means it has an easier chance to trap them and pick them off, as well as getting slightly more specials. Honestly, the only thing that makes it more comparable to Machine is the kit is worse. Suction is okay, but you can't use it as much, and it's not the same as Fizzy, and on top of that, Wave Breaker is really mediocre. It does have really good synergy with range, mainly if you use it to retake, it can find if people are hiding, and then if you find them, you get to shoot them, and you get to walk forward. So it is still really useful for this weapon in terms of getting back in. It is nice to be able to grab that. However, it is still a weaker special as a whole, and there are going to be situations where you get your special, and you really wish you had something else. The possibility for Custom Range Blaster or some other strong kit could lead to it being even higher. Would it be a top, top tier on Tower Control? Probably. For the other modes, not sure. Have to see what the kit is and what the meta is like at the time, but I think right now it is a good time to be a range blaster player. However, I don't think it is the best blaster though. I would currently still rank the rapid blaster deco as the best one. While the area of effect is a little bit smaller, you get better mobility, insane sub special combination with torpedo and inkjet, and I think rapid works really well with so many other high tier weapons. It combos with squeezer, it combos with pencil, it works well with fizzy bomb, it works well with stamper, everything. And it helps a lot with the mid range matchups that I've really been stressing throughout this series. It does have one big downside though, you know, outside of usual, Blaster does not paint well, which is 210p jetpack. There are going to be situations where you're on retake and you know you are not going to get your special in time and someone else will have to have it. Because of that, even though this has an entry tool and a sub to locate people, which is very nice for this weapon, I do think you really need to have two other weapons that can help get it in, or you need to have a map that really favors it or is easier to get in on. So depending on the stage, it can be a little bit more complex dependent, and there are still some compositions it could struggle to fight into, but realistically, this weapon could work pretty much everywhere, as long as the map isn't too bad for it. Zeko Finn is our one-shot charger representative of this tier list, and I have been waiting to talk about this one. I do think Zeko Finn is the best charger we'll use. I think the mobility it provides is the most important thing compared to E-Leader, it being faster given how aggressive this meta is, and having the faster charge time is important. I think Wall is really useful for positioning more aggressively. There are times I see good chargers wanting to play more off angles, playing much further ahead or on the side compared to their team, and Wall allows you to play in those positions. And on top of that, I think it's the tri-strike weapon with the best synergy. You can use it in positions with the wall to protect you, you're usually far away enough, and the pain it can provide for zones is exceptionally useful for charger, which struggles with that. Of course, usual charger counterplay exists. Things usually just try to play outside of its sight lines as much as possible, play 4v3s. Cooler is still difficult to deal with. A lot of specials, mainly Crab and Zuka, are still good against it, though it is very nice against Jetpack. It still has its counters, but I think this is the one that is the most worth it as a whole. Next up is Sorella Tenebrella. Like many things in this tier, is something with a very strong kit. Ink Mine is possibly the best sub for this thing. You can set them up using the Tenebrella shield. The combos are really easy to work off of, and on top of that, Zuka with the 10 shield in front of you to give you even better positions. Something you can pop out to just instantly go for anyone trying to shred your shield is exceptionally strong in its own right. 10 shield is something that just has to be respected and played around a lot of the time. It takes specific resources to take care of it. You can have people waste bombs, waste shots on it. You do have to be careful to put it in the right positions. Tent is still a very slow weapon that has its own fair share of weaknesses, just mostly in terms of speed and ink efficiency. But I think the insane utility of a launch Tenebrella shield along with a strong kit is in a very good spot right now. So since a recent tournament, there's three weapons that I've moved up from the high tier episode here, and one of which is the vanilla Tenebrella. Now, while the kit may seem a bit weaker on paper, Tenebrella gets rid of pretty much every weakness vacuum has. The shield can protect you, make it really difficult for it to be filled or other weapons to punish you with it, and allows you to be able to paint and move forward with it more freely with your team, making it a better entry tool. And of course, beacons are insanely useful on many different maps, especially in tent style comps. The synergy the kit has with the main weapon pushes it to be here in zones alongside its Sorella kit, even if I think the other one is a bit better. Slosher also saw some increase in results recently. This weapon does still have a very nice 70 damage combo with a hit from a splat bomb, which means it's incredibly good at fighting pretty much anything short range or peeking under ledges. Its main difficulty is the fact that Tri-Strike can't act as a continuation special compared to Machine's Booyah Bomb, as well as it's struggling more with mid-range matchups. However, it's done a little bit better recently, and I think the strengths the main weapon has makes it worth using as a whole. There's definitely enough ways to get around it, especially with Tactical Lure, for example, to retain your Tri-Strike after death. Next up in this tier is the Heavy Edit Spotlight. This weapon has been on the rise since getting a very important paint buff, allowing it to not only keep up with, but possibly surpass the cooler output of some of the other main options. While it's definitely a lot better, in my eyes, it's still the worst of the four cooler 
weapons. I think it really struggles against backline comps, especially Pencil, which will be hard to deal with with how many of them there are right now. And the weapon does still have some speed issues with having the second longest charge time in the game. That being said, the insane mobility edit has, along with its paint output, definitely gives it enough reasons to be picked, and I think depending on how comps evolve, it could be better in the future. Still definitely nice to see this weapon moving up. And the final weapon before we get to the very best ones in the game is Splatana Stamper Neo. Let's get it right off the bat. While it can help outside of line of sight, for the most part, Stamper with Mist is not really that great a combination, especially when you're comparing it to the vanilla one, which has Burst Bomb. It is an obvious downgrade. However, what it provides is a mid-range crab option, which before the best option we had for that was down here with the vanilla pro. This is a significant upgrade. I'll talk more about what Stamper does when I get to the vanilla Stamper because it is still the main one. However, I will say that this kit plays a lot more passive. I think it's really good in backlist comps or on maps where you want to get a lot of crab. This thing can possibly get more crab than any other weapon with it in the game. It gives you solid distance paint. Not like amazing paint you can work to easily take space with, but it is easier to farm the special in the middle of a match than it is for something that has less painting range. It is still a stamper and pretty much everything I mentioned when we get to the vanilla stamper is applicable here. Brief intermission. Today I want to tell you about Genesis. This is a tournament that's been treasured for years in the Splatoon community and has been the driving force between the California local competitive scene and has brought a number of players into the fold and helped created a series of the greatest moments and memories in the game's competitive history. This year is Genesis X and it will be the first time in four years that Splatoon will be at this event. And it's happening this February the 16th through the 18th and Splatoon will be running a 4v4 bracket over two days as well as a salmon run tournament. If you need any extra information or have questions to ask the event runners, please join the Splatlands Discord. You can also find it in the description of this video. It's going to be a very cool event with some fun surprises in store that you won't want to miss. Let's get back to the video. And that brings us to our top tiers and since we're talking about it, let's cover Stamper first. This vanilla kit is a little bit better because you have Burst Bombs and Zipcaster, both of which combo very well with the main weapon. While Zipcaster is a little bit weaker than Crab, it has better synergy with the main weapon. When you're going in, Zipcaster is going to be easier to use as the Ranger and is going to be easier to extend streaks you have and it really pushes this weapon into more of a Slayer than the other kit. And I think in this case, Stamper's insane mid-range pressure with 70 damage on the Charge Slash is exceptionally good when most of your subs are bombs that are going to combo and kill off of it. You have combos with your own bombs with your own weapon. You can combo Charge Slash in your own Horizontal Slash or Burst Bomb at a distance. You can one-shot people if you're up close. Horizontal Slash is really good for reliable chip damage if you're on horizontal surfaces. It's not a perfect weapon. It has a lot of downtime due to the ink efficiency, especially if you're using your Burst Bomb. Zip Caster can still be an inconsistent special, especially given that this is probably the hardest weapon in the game at a competitive level. And of course, it cannot paint anywhere near like the level of a shooter, so it is still a little bit comp dependent. You're going to want to run things that work with it. But really, it is an insanely strong weapon and kit that has been proven to stand the test of time and has been a consistent top tier in this game. Tri Slosher Nouveau is the cooler option and the weapon I most debated moving a little bit lower, mainly because its cooler output is a bit weaker. However, keep in mind, we are talking about splat zones only, which means you are going to have last ditch effort and you are going to have double fizzy. And with double fizzy, your cooler output is going to be fine, which means now you have a try, arguably a better main weapon than Zapper Pencil that provides insane comp utility with how well it can fight anything short range and under ledges. It is still a bit of a gear investment for the amount of charge up you need, and in fact we've even seen some tri sloshers trying sub saver and sub power builds on top of last ditch to have double fizzy all the time. Kyo recently tried this in the Sendukyu tournament and I found it quite interesting to watch, but regardless I think developments are showing that especially in a zones only environment tri nouveau can keep up with the cooler output and of course because of that having access to the best bomb in the game, having access to such a strong main weapon is very valuable. Zap 85 is probably the more standard one though, and I mean, what new is there to say about this weapon? It's end zap. It's been a thing since Splatoon 2 with a very similar kit. Of course, cooler is more aggressive and more fun, and your ability to take fights is a lot more important than in Splatoon 2, but for the most part, this is something where we've understood how this works for a long time. It is a fast weapon with solid paint, with a solid bomb that can use it frequently, especially when last ditch is active. The mobility, especially with cooler, is insane for this weapon. It can flex between being supportive and more aggressive, especially when it has cooler, and this might just be a meta weapon we see forever at this point because it's been so many years of this thing at the top of the tier list. Our last cooler weapon to talk about in this top tier is Snipe Rider. While a bit less common in Japan right now, in the Western scene, this absolutely dominates. And yes, usually the take is that Japan is a bit ahead of the Western scene. However, this is one case where I have seen some players like Kyo say, I get it, but I don't think they're right.
this weapon is ridiculous, especially in zones, and I also agree with it. Future Chora stepping in here, because guess what happened right after recording this live? It won in Japan as well. What a surprise. Nah, I'm kidding. It was only a matter of time. Anyway, back to Pashtar. Now, I still think that you don't need Pencil. I think that there are other comps that can deal with it and potentially be better. However, this weapon is insane. 68 damage might not combo with bombs like Stamper, but it can combo with pretty much anything else. The paint it has is insane. The cooler output is really good. Sprinkler is kind of mediocre, but this is like the perfect weapon for it, where you just set it up like Bagel did on the top right of Inkblot Art Academy, and it just lives as long as you do, constantly painting a tiny bit in a corner, because nobody can go shoot it down. And this weapon just outputs a ton of paint, it combos with everything, and it's very, very solid. You have to deal with it, and it's very annoying to deal with it, because it's very far away, and it moves very fast, with a lot of people able to capitalize off it. Really, one of its only downsides is it does take a bit to rotate positions, because you have a charge time, and it can't take its own space, because, you know, it's a charger. You can't just walk in somewhere because you painted it, or you're going to get sharked and shot. But really, those are two exceptionally small downsides for an incredibly strong weapon that on some maps is basically a necessity. And finally, I think this is the first time in Splatoon 3 that both kits of a single weapon I have ranked the absolute top of a tier list. Of course, it's Squeezer. Foil Squeezer and Vanilla Squeezer are here together at the absolute top of the list. Let's start with the main weapon, and I mean, it's very similar to what I talked about in Splatoon 2. You have a mode with no jump RNG, insane range, three shot kill time that's one frame slower than Spotter Shot Pro, a paint mode to help cover for that, which means your special output, especially on Foil Squeezer with 190p, is decent. The only thing that's really bad about this weapon, outside of the mashing requirement in terms of in-game stuff, is the fact that it can struggle to find people. And when Squeezer doesn't have information on where people are, it is possible to be able to shark it out and get picks on it, except they now gave it a kit that has auto bomb and screen, where it can be used to get information on where people are, and also be ran in any comps that are awkward for this one. So congratulations. While Foil Squeezer may not have the insane power of having a Trizuka instead having a screen, you now have the ability to get around one of the weapon's worst weaknesses, and it's a bomb so cheap you can use it despite the weapon's ink efficiency. On one hand, you have a Squeezer with a bomb with screen that can work in way more comps that gets around the weapon's main weakness, and if for whatever reason you don't want that, you also have another kit that has wall, which is still useful for a lot of specific matchups, and Trizuka, one of the best special in the game. Sure, you might not get as many of them as the foil kit, but that is still a really strong kit for how good this main weapon is. In a meta that is centered around fighting and primarily main weapons, I think these two are some of the best options, and I really want to see what Squeezer players are able to do. I think this weapon is insane, and we have been seeing plenty of it in top level. And that is all the special weapons, sub weapons, and main weapons completely ranked. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you all next time.